Okay, we're back here inside the Cube, live from New York City for a special Cube presentation, siliconangle.com, wikibon.org, the Cube. We're here covering HP's Moonshot, big announcement, changing the game in the data center, changing the game in the computing landscape, enabling what we're seeing today, cloud, mobile, and social, new application framework software, exciting times. I'm John Furry, the founder of siliconangle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org, and Suresh Gopalakrishnan is here. He's the vice president of AMD's server business, and we are geeking out big time today with uh, system on a chip and talking about changes in the server market. Suresh, welcome to theCUBE. Hey, thank you for having me. Yeah, great to see you today. So, um, so you, first of all, you got props here. We, let's go right to it. Um, we've right. been seeing all kinds of innovations all day. Ho yeah, hold it up nice okay. and high. Right? Perfect. Here you go. So tell us what we're looking at here. So you, you're looking at um, one of our next generation uh, accelerated processing units, which is a combination of CPU and GPU uh, built together. Um, and this goes into the HP Moonshot. Um, system, this is one of the cartridges. So that's one of the cartridges, slides right in. Your IP is embedded in there, Correct. right? Correct, it's, it's right here. Uh, okay. In these four SOCs, or systems on a chip. Okay, okay. And, and we asked earlier, but I, I want you to describe, so w systems on a chip, what does that mean? What makes it systems on a chip? And, and what are the attributes of a system on a chip? I, I think one of the uh, previous guests also mentioned this, but uh, if you look at a traditional server, you will see a lot of um, CPUs plus the memory associated with it and then a lot of chipsets that talk to either the I.O. or to, to memory. Um, and in this case, all of that, um, all of the devices that are needed to talk to the uh, I.O. as well as memory is embedded in one of these, these chips. Hold up a little higher so they can see it. Um, so it, it's in one of those chips. We have four of these chips in here. Um, and then uh, the memory is attached to the back. Okay, so, so the only thing that you need to build a server, um, a basic compute node, are just the processors and the memory. So that's a packaging innovation. Obviously, you've got to figure out how to ma make them at scale, make them reliable. Correct. Um, there's there's other capabilities that you have to design in there. Why all of a sudden are you seeing just such action uh, in this space? What has been the technological breakthrough to allow the industry to develop such such innovation? One of them is is that as the silicon geometry becomes smaller and smaller, you get to pack a lot more mm -hmm. uh, a lot more stuff into uh, into silicon, right? And the other capabilities that you can put a uh, lot more cores into these um, into these uh, uh, SOCs themselves. So you're, you're looking at um, you know you can put anywhere from um, eight to sixteen and going to twenty four and thirty two kind of cores coming into into a single chip. At that point, you're bringing in enough compute capability into this uh, into a single chip uh, to build a server around it. Right? If you have one or two cores, it doesn't doesn't make sense, but when you have large number of cores, you have enough ho computing horsepower in there, that gives you the ability to say, hey, now I can bring in some of the other peripheral chips into this. Yeah, no, we've been talking to a lot today about you know, power consumption and heat density, and you know, several years ago, Google you know, wrote a paper and quantified sort of the impact on, on what it was gonna mean to, to their environment. Um, you're starting to see that now trickle into the, 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 the traditional data centers, aren't you? Where where, where energy consumption, power and cooling is becoming a, an onerous component of the operating expense. Is that the main driver behind these innovations or are there others? Uh, th there are m multiple things. One is, power is one that everybody talks about, space is another one. So most people have to operate within that given power and space constraint. So if density was not a matter, you could kind of keep chips outside and, and build bigger boards. Um, so that, that's one part. The other part is when you have chips that are talking to other chips, you're going to expend energy. Right? So when you do it as an SOC, you kind of reduce the amount of energy that is dissipated in that communication. So both of those things are the so reasons why. Suresh, so so let me ask you a question, because we've been talking about this earlier when we do in our commentary on the, on the, in the morning, was um, the big trend everyone's talking about right now is the changing landscape of the data center, both obviously from a physical plant perspective, facility perspective, as well as architecture around how the servers are built, and you know, obviously Google builds their own, and Facebook's got Open Compute Summit. Um, brings the question around customization. So what's your view on this whole changing landscape around customization where, and you know, I'm on, I'm on record saying, hey, you know, I, I think that's great, the high-end guys that might build their own like Google, that's just a, a, a skewed data point in my mind, but the average big enterprise will assemble their own, not necessarily build their own. What is the trend here with these kinds of components? You, you got programmability, you got software that can do things on the chips, are, is this whole thing overhyped, this whole build your own thing, build your own like data center from scratch? 
build, build your own, you know, I, I think you hit <laughs> some of the, the, the things right. I mean, you have to have a certain scale before you kind of start customizing everything uh, to your to your level. So uh, the examples you give Google and Facebook have the scale to kind of go do that. Um, and uh, we, we see some of the trends from open compute where people who are still spending a little bit of, a uh, little bit more money than your, your, your um, small business, uh, trying to say that, hey, we want to procure it a little differently. Um, so uh, will they go and build their own server? Most likely not. They will, they will require them to design from the plant perspective up to the apps, right? So there's a little bit different mindset too, right? Correct. So um, they, they will, they'll most likely go with an open compute kind of model where they can buy these, these things, source them differently, uh, and then figure out how to manage that as a common common thing. So you heard from our previous session, everyone likes to talk about software-defined data center. Obviously, that's a, a nice marketing uh, tactic now, but the real it's a real destination for folks as they look at the holistic of the operating system. Um, how does all this innovation at the physical product standpoint factor into what software-defined blank means? So software-defined server. I w how would you tackle that question? I, I, t I tend to keep away from everything software-defined <laughs> because it's so so hyped up and so... Um, uh, controversial. So, so controversial. I mean, I, you can call anything software-defined uh, because software is what turns the hardware on. Right? So <laughs> it's, it's everything. You let your marketing guys worry about that. Yeah, right? I mean, so it, uh, you know, I have to do some marketing as well. But um, you know, software-defined networking uh, kind of started the whole thing, and then you know, I think um, uh, one of my favorite partners has now started the software-defined data center uh, approach. Uh, there's an open data center um, uh, community out there yeah, as well. Yeah, VMware, right? Yeah. Uh, so B VMware started that, and then there's an open um, community out there as well that is trying to define okay, various, it, various yeah. things around there. So one of the things is there's a lot of programmability in, in these kind of products, right? When you, when you put in your I.O. and your, um, your networking into, into these things, you have to program all of those things. And uh, programmability at the highest level would be to how do you manage that whole, um, whole data center. Uh, so y you start with software there. How do you provision? How do you um, how, how do you connect your network together? How do you take care of reliability? How do you kind of redundancy? All of those things at the software level. That's probably what the better definition for everything software defined. Yeah, everything software. That's why we like software-led infrastructure. Um, so you guys have had to compete, you know, over the years, and, and you've you've been around a long time. You know the business uh, in the space that you're in. Um, almost by definition, you, you you have to have a value proposition that is more compelling than the, the biggest player out there. What is specific, uh, as it relates to Moonshot AMD's unique value that you're bringing to the table here? So uh, what we are focused on is what we call the accelerated processing unit, uh, which is bringing the right amount of CPU as well as parallel computing together on the, on the same chip, something like we have done here as well. Uh, what that does is that when you look at highly parallelized workloads, uh, that are in these uh, data centers, you now get to use the parallel processing capabilities that are available in GPUs uh, within a, without adding a separate GPU on there, it is on die, it is lower power, and can give you the parallel capability. Mm -hmm. And so, um, we've been talking a lot about the hyperscale space as well, and you know, John and I have been sort of envisioning this, this space, and on one side is the hyperscale, and the other side is the, the traditional enterprise, and they've been relatively separate. Uh, up until recently, you're yeah. starting to see the the two bleed together. I mean, um, and we certainly believe that the Googles and the Facebooks and the Amazons are sort of showing the way. Um, sort of you know, things like DevOps uh, came out of that world, and, and you, could, you know, certainly cloud as well with with Amazon's sort of invention essentially <laughs> of the, the cloud. What do you see as far as the hyperscale space? The, the major trends driving that, and how fast are they driving into the traditional enterprise? Depends entirely on software. Um, That's the gate. That's the gate, yeah. uh, because in, in the, if you look at um, all the hyperscale, all the cloud players, they pretty much own their software, either through open source or their own development. Mm -hmm. Enterprises depend a lot on buying software. So I, I think in your earlier meeting yeah. you were talking about, <laughs> you know, is it going yep. to be SAP, is it going to be Oracle? It's going to be gated by the software vendors. Yeah, so um, what's your take on open source? What's uh, wh wh What's AMD's sort of posture toward open source? What do you do to, you know, if anything, to cultivate sort of that uh, open source environment? Or are you a consumer of open source uh, internally? And yeah, we, we are a consumer of um, open source. We are we participate in in um, a, a lot of the Linux distributions. Uh, we work with um, various folks to make sure that uh, our 
uh, optimizations are in the open source compilers. We have people working on that. We are also part of Open Compute, which is on the open hardware mm -hmm. uh, side of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we covered that at, uh, when we had the last time. It was awesome. The question, let's go back to the software thing, because again, this is something that we really are feel passionate about. Uh, we do love the software message. Obviously, you, you can hear that in our conversations. But um, the developer communities are changing. You mentioned commercial software, buying prepackaged software and or, say, Oracle or whatever, uh, is shifting to open source and sourcing that either directly from the communities themselves or putting kind of a, a layer on top of it. Um, what does this mean for the developer community? And you guys work with developers, obviously, at, at your level, much lower levels, down to the chip level, but then you go up and down the stack. Everyone in the cloud market wants to move up the stack and have a SaaS model, have the on-prem SLA security. What's going on in the developer community that you can share from your perspective that, that, that uh, that's relevant for people to understand? Yeah, I mean, um, you, you can start, start with uh, how the LAMP stack um, evolved, right? And uh, you know, that's now supported on all kinds of processors uh, at this point. It's supported on x86, it's supported on 32-bit uh, ARM, it's now going to be supported on 64-bit ARM. So definitely that um, set of tools are available for, uh, for developers to develop on. And what we have done on top of it is to make sure that when we introduce the uh, accelerated processing units, it is a very simple model for them to program to that. Um, so you can, you know, in the, we're working with um, the uh, developer community to get to, uh, to the right compiler so that you, you don't have to figure out whether it's an APU or a GPU underneath it. You can just compile it. Uh, you mentioned Java. That. Is there any particular languages yeah. that's cool that you like that's more um, going with this than others? Uh, actually, the, you know, th there are surprising things when you find when you when you try to introduce ARM and uh, x86 and APUs into the market. Um, there's a lot of HPC related um, code that's available in public uh, as well as with uh, with companies that who treat it as their IP. They are very interested in using a combination of APUs and ARMs into uh, into developing uh, their solutions, either for power or for for GPU. So you guys are in the ecosystem with HP here. Talk about what you what uh, what AMD is bringing to the table with Moonshot and how that relates to the overall picture. So um, you know we we have been part of Pathfinder program since uh, 2011, and uh, we've been working on this cartridge for a bit uh, uh, with HP. Um, our uh, like I said, our primary focus is to bring the right kind of. Uh, um, CPU and GPU technologies together uh, so that uh, for the, um, the hyperscale workloads and the HPC type workloads and media streaming, uh, we have a great value proposition that we can bring to HP. And you see the workload messaging that, that we heard that in the, in, the, in, the, in the webcast. Obviously, workloads drive a lot of the, the conversation around what's deployed. Do you agree with that? Uh, absolutely. I think um, if, if you look at um, you know, some, some of the workloads, um, you can see people trying to put um, discrete GPUs, which we have and we sell, uh, along with our Optron um, general purpose CPUs. Uh, and we also are seeing people um, looking at APUs to, to do that. Okay, final question, then we'll, we'll get you the last word in here. Explain to the folks out there from your perspective, obviously you've been in, in from the beginning for a while with the, with the ecosystem and with HP Moonshot. What does the Moonshot announcement mean to the industry? And, and what is it going to do? What ripple effect is this going to have? Uh, for folks out there, what do they need to pay attention to from your your perspective? I, I think for folks who are who are wh whose workloads um, are 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 very uh, scale out oriented, um, you know this is this is the the right platform to go with because this allows new levels of scale out with. Uh, within their existing power and space constraints. We heard the CIO say it's a zero risk situation because you can just play with it and then if it works, you buy it. If not, you don't. So, all right, Suresh, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. This is Silicon Angle Month's coverage uh, in live in New York City for HP Moonshot special CUBE presentation. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.